My lack of knowledge of football was pretty bad at the beginning. When he was in youth football, he never wanted to hurt his friends. I would hit a guy really hard and I would help him up. My, my coach would get really mad at me, like, why are you helping him up? I was like, oh, I was just trying to be nice. He goes, no, you don't, you're not nice in the field. Like, you're trying to be mean, you're trying to hurt someone, and so. But there were also some games that his friends had talked to him ahead of time. Please don't hit me. And so instead of hitting them, he literally would pick them up and lay them down. I mean, he did it several times. I don't know what finally turned that trigger to get him to understand that it's okay to, to hit them. They found a way to have him turn that, that switch on. And then after that, there was no turning back. It was like the unleashing the beast. So growing up in Australia, it was, it was an amazing experience. It was really great for me just to be able to had that diversity as a kid and just, you know, have a different worldview. It really expanded and broadened my horizon. We spent a ton of time at the beach. They learned to swim at a very young age. <laughs> Solomon at the beach would not get out of the waves. He had no fear. There was always a place on the beach that we would go get fish and chips from. And so I set him with his fish and chips, thinking that he could handle them. And she came back and there was probably 10 seagulls on me just eating my food. I'm just wailing, crying. And they were sitting on his shoulders, they were on his lap, they were eating everything and he wouldn't move. And my mom comes over, shoes him off and... Just looked at me like, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I was a little coordinated as a kid growing up, really don't know why, but it just it was harder for me to, you know, just click on certain areas of my athletic ability. So they had to take some kind of a arts class. So I did Irish dance and you know. He was the only boy in the Irish dance class and so they all kind of danced around him. I did that like every day after school and then we'd go to soccer practice and it just got better and better. From one season to the next his soccer coach said to us what have you been doing with him? It was the Irish dance lessons that worked his feet. Yeah, Texas was a big transition. It was definitely a culture shock for me, you know. Coppell is like a Texas football town, you know. Everyone loves football there. The huge football stadium, huge high school. When we first moved there, we couldn't figure out why everything was so quiet on, on Friday night. It's so intense, it's like a religion. Football in Texas is like no other place. Everything you've heard about Texas and Texas high school football just times up by 10. He was very big for his age at that point in time. He hadn't played football, he hadn't played rugby, he hadn't played anything yet. He had a love affair with his Xbox games. Not really listening to my parents, not eating right, just, you know, just being lazy. Video games, potato chip, potato chips, video games, and before he knew it, he picked up a few pounds. In sixth grade, he couldn't even run a mile. All the other kids could, you know, like, he didn't want to be the last kid. A lot of them, especially the bigger lineman type kids, they're like that, you know, they still have a lot of baby fat on them. We just, you know, have to teach them how to work. That weight started moving. He didn't necessarily lose it, it just moved to different places. I was probably some of the hardest conditioning I've ever done in my life, honestly, in seventh and eighth grade. Solomon says Coach McCowan taught them how to work hard. I mean, his transformation in middle school, you know, this kid who couldn't run a mile, to being on the sprint team, pretty amazing transformation. I knew he was going to be special on the football field, that was obvious. He just had the full package, the drive, the commitment, the physical tools, the mental attitude. When I watched him, I just immediately realized how passionate he played in the games as a freshman. And man, his motor just, he practiced and played like he was one bad play from being benched. What they put me through could have burned out a lot of players, but it just made me love the game more and more. It just taught me that, you know, this game's for me, you know. He would work out in the morning with the varsity as a freshman. And then the freshman worked out after school. And so he would come and he'd already have his practice. And I was coaching the other freshmen and I hear this explosion behind me and I turn around and there's Solomon just in his school clothes. And he worked on his first step on his own for about 35, 40 minutes. And that, that gives you a little insight about what really makes Solomon Thomas special. I have no idea who that kid is that plays football. You know, on the field, it's like really hard to explain who I am. I'm just a different person. The switch between, you know, David Banner and the Hulk or, or Clark Kent and Superman and just want to find a way to just annihilate the, the person in front of him. The Solomon in the locker room, the Solomon in class, in the community is not the Solomon when they say set hit. 
This guy becomes a different guy, and that guy is violent and mean and serious. It just resonated with the whole team. Just brought it every day, and, and they were affected by his leadership in that way. Whenever like we would be in the weight room, and I would see guys like sucking off, I'd be like, "Hey, let's go!" Or like when, when I saw guys tired, and those times that like I could push through, I would try to bring others with me. And when the team needed certain things, that I would be there. And you know, he had friends that backed him up, and and other guys who wanted the same thing. So coming into high school, you know, everyone knew who Jacob Logan was. Jacob, you know, was the best soccer player, best baseball player, and best football player on the field. I come in my freshman year, and he kind of, you know, comes up to me and he's like, you know, I don't think you have it in you. Like, everyone talks about how good you can be, you're big, but I don't think you have that dog factor. I don't think you have that anger. Jacob really took Solomon under his wings and really pushed Solomon to be better and better at everything and to go harder and do more. Was that role model, like, how to work hard, you know, how to do the right thing on and off the field. Um, but my junior year is like we were we were really close, you know, always putting work together, you know. It became a brotherly bond, and uh, Solomon really looked up to him. But those friends, and especially your best friend, they have a great influence on you. And, and that was Jacob for Solomon. <laughs> Jacob passed on a Sunday, and people were just shocked. I mean, they were in shock and they were so saddened because people wanted to be around him. And I mean, it was really hard to cope with it during the season because like, we had to move on, we had to keep practicing playing, and we all just lost our brother. You know, there were kids who said, who's, who's going to look after me now when Jacob's not here? Solomon Thomas, as a young man, walked in and talked to our team after Jacob passed. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen from a young man. The way he handled that situation and how close they were. It was like he put his football team on his back, he put his high school on his back. How compassionate and loving he was towards Jacob's sister was something I'll never forget too. Like I learned a lot from Jacob, like being able to be a warrior, fight, work hard. We had the short amount of time we got to live, short amount of time we got to play football, short amount of time we could be with our friends. Just, just live that out, and that's what Jacob did. You know, like he affected everyone he, he was with. You know, when I, when I go, when it's my time, when I go see the Lord and Jesus, like I want that to be me. I want to leave this impact on kids, on my friends, my family. Just, just show them that like I gave everything I could in each second I had, and so. There's no limit. Whoever drafts him. He's going to make them right, not just on the field, in the locker room. He'll be a fan favorite in the stadium. He'll be the fan favorite in the community. It's going to be fun to watch. I feel like I can do so much in this world, you know, whether it's football or pass football, but I want to be the best person I can be, best teammate, best player. He'll do good things.